Hey guys, it's Paul, combat veteran, MMA fighter, YouTuber, and today we are checking out another Lazy Purple. I love these. I wish he had 100 million of them, but he's only got one for every character class, so let's get into it. This is how it feels to play heavy. But first, be sure to check the description because I have launched a Discord. We have all sorts of fun times there. We have cursed images, TF2 memes, art, you name it, we've got it. Plus Warhammer 40k stuff and a chance to ask me some Q&As. That's, I'm there almost every day, so it's definitely worth checking out. Also, be sure to check out the merch store. I'm always adding new designs all the time, and if there is an idea you have, let me know in the Discord and I'll try to make it happen. Okay, having done that, let's get into it. <laughs> ah, the highly realistic damage eating abilities of heavy. Whoa, medic with a Japanese geisha hat? Dude, these get weirder and weirder the more I watch. And soldier with the old school Napoleonic era helm. Met. Hat? I think it's just a hat. I don't think it has any protective qualities. I've all been there. Also, okay, I just want to point something out with rocket launchers. Normally, they have a minimum safe distance in which they need to arm, right? So the idea that you are going to be able to effectively shoot someone with a rocket who's like three meters away with you is just like not really the case. Thank you! Thank you! Life is pain! That was a recreation of a competitive heavy clip showcasing the raw power of this big Russian boy. As the slowest class in the game, Heavy truly struggles to outposition his opponents. Because of this, many heavy mains live for the moments where you just say, fuck it, and blindly jump around a corner into the enemy team. Oh no! These moments are so gratifying, and if you stopped watching this video right now, don't, you'd think that Heavy <laughs> is the best class in the game. But oh boy, you'd be wrong. I don't want it to be wrong. Ooh, this is classy. Taking it back to Super Mario 3, right? Or is that Mario All-Stars? If you ever feel a need to hone your spy paranoia, play heavy for an extended period of time. I can barely walk out of spawn anymore without thinking, ah, it's a spy. Oh, wait, it's just my scout asking for a sandwich. Let me take it out. And oh, look at that. My medic's dead. Peekaboo. <laughs> play heavy anymore but i can't shout out to comic sans the worst and greatest font ever played about spies all day heavy's massive health pool allows him to tank all sorts of damage and make his enemies look silly haha <laughs> just kidding i'm still complaining about spies you might think oh my god well d that's me playing pyro it's hard when you stream dude because everyone can see exactly where you are heavy doesn't have any movement but here i'm barely able to punish this demo for assuming i'll back up by walking into him one of heavy's greatest movement tricks is to be braver than your opponent expects Whew, that sure was a close one eh spy Nope, got you again. This whole segment is yeah. be complaining about spies. Even when you catch a spy, they just won't die. Just look at this spy. He is so screwed, and yet he won't die. He just won't <laughs> die. Ah, oh, he's got that matrix, man. He once once you take the the blue pill. No, no, the red pill. The red pill. You take the red pill. And so did. Despite all my complaining, I've really improved at countering spies. So all you spy mates better watch out. I'm out to get you. Cease your existence. Whoa, dark. It's such a delight when you punish a spy for blipping out of their invisibility for even a second. Uh -oh. I hope it's not too upsetting for you spy mates when this happens. After all, it's all in good fun. Dude, man, I mean, this is fine, but it just seems like a worse version of Pyro. And of course, it's always a feel-good moment when you save your medic. Not this time, spy. Oh, your head. What, what's with a Betty Crocker? Betty Crocker's delicious. It's not. It wouldn't kill anybody. It's just cake. 
What could be funnier than a spike just messing up entirely? I'm coming for you. Oh no. I couldn't succeed at what I'm doing. Credit to the amazing Bill Wirtz. Ah! I'm dead. I'm gonna have to probably mute that. How far is it thick? Again, if you want to build a healthy sense of Oh God, I could be shot in the face at any moment if I'm not careful and every moment of life is a blessing, Heavy is your guy. Here, you can see me brawling it out on the point when I suddenly get the overwhelming premonition that I'm about to be shot in the face. I crouch in anticipation, but BOOM! Just a second too late because of the way lag works. That mm, you know what? That's probably the most realistic part to combat. Just the idea that anywhere, at any time, someone could be sitting in a building or on a hilltop or just sort of laying in the ground somewhere and could just shoot you in the head at any moment is sort of terrifying. That's right, meet me at land, muffin man. I mean, I get it, right? Sniper counter is heavy. But some snipers just take it too far, man. This guy headshots me and then tries his luck again. Yeah, don't hurt yourself trying. Anyway, I won't be peeking that door anytime soon. Get out onto your head, mate. I'm gonna pet one right between your eyes, you Whoa, dark, mean. I can take care of this mini sentry, then dip back inside. Wave goodbye to your head, wanker. I'm gonna turn you into colored rain. Oh, someone's shooting me. I'll take care of that. Get out of here, scout. You've been eating another use for the neck. Hoot! Finally, I'll top off my health, and surely by now the sniper is peeking somewhere see else. Ya. I wanna play head. Dude, that, that is good sniping. That's just how that works, man. You just win via patience. Patience and choosing a great location, a what's called a natural choke point. And that is one, right? You have to pass through that door to get to the rest of the team, maybe to an objective. And so camping right there is the sniper, the, is the best place for sniper to do it. And you notice that sniper eh, didn't do a great job, but it sort of had some cover and concealment, right? Making it, of course, a good sniper position. You notice it also had an easy way to exfil, an easy way to leave that didn't involve going closer to the enemy in case, say, two or more enemy were to come through that door. It was actually a pretty well-chosen position. Thankfully, there's some justice in the world. The enemy sniper sees me, and again, you better hold onto your head, mate. But I've learned my lesson, and I'm not moving an inch. Wave goodbye to your head, wanker. Yeah, I see your little dot thing. I'm not moving. You better another use for that neck. But then, one, two, three. Thank you. Weren't no thing. Okay, okay, so Heavy gets wrecked by spy and sniper. But what is he good at? Basically, he's a monster in head-to-head -head combat. <laughs> oh? Whoa, dramatic. Don't do that. Don't just rush heavy without a plan. That's what he wants. Here's an excellent example of what not to do. Hey guys, there's a heavy at our cliff. Don't worry, Pyro. He's no match for me. Oh, ye gods, no. Don't worry, soldier. Oh. Not to worry. I've got this under control. All of you are... <laughs> Mediocrity at its finest. And doctor, please kill me. That's great. Babies! Who sent all these babies? Oh, I am dead. Ah! My entire team is babies! Hmm, he's not wrong. That's how it probably feels when you're like a 300 pound dude. Hey, you, mate! Yes, you, lad. I'm here to teach you how to position yourself against a heavy. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Okay. This is not a good position to be in against a heavy. Yeah, that seems about right. Ah! No worries. This is also not a good position to be in against a heavy. Thanks for the practice. Ah! Let's see what you've learned. Is this A, not a good position to be in against a heavy, or B, a good position to be in against a heavy? <laughs> I think I know this. You're making this so easy. A? Ah! Look, you have to treat every corner like there's a heavy or pyro right around it. You can't just open a door and be like, Hey, what's going on in here? Or else you're gonna get your team ripped apart one by one. Mowing down unprepared opponents is heavy's thing, man. It's- Oh, interesting. What makes him so fun to play? Screaming Eagles! Well, that was not the plan. All these moments where you just delete overconfident enemies from the video game are so rewarding. Oh, one health left. Time to take a sandwich out of my pocket and eat it. I've been wearing these pants for three days. That's right. Right, after a long day of shredding bad guys, it's nice to just take it easy and grab a bite out of your... Oh no. Oh. I love how this is an even match. Eating a sandwich and being shot repeatedly by a automated uh, machine gun. Sandwich. 
Okay, that's pretty funny. I really want to learn how to do that on my video editor. It's hard to imagine life without the sandwich. Heavy takes so much damage all the time that he absolutely needs a way to recharge without going to health kits. Come on, Heavy, why can't you eat your sandwich underwater? <sighs> You're about to die! Of course, eating your sandwich is always a gamble since it makes you stand still for so long. How could this happen to me? <laughs> Just these compiled clips are great. I made my mistakes! But now where to run? Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, yes, please continue this pop song. But sometimes it's nice to just take a minute and watch things unfold. This here point's ours now! <laughs> and besides, you'd be surprised how much the sandwich actually heals you in a pinch. Honey dog! Yeah! I'm going to soft screw your bones! Uh. Yeah, that would be actually really terrifying. I have plans for you! No! Yes! <laughs> Hello, yes. You might not have known that you can give your sandwich to other players. If you didn't, don't worry. Your teammates would have told you. Can you give me a sandwich? Can you give me a sandwich? Can you give me a sandwich? Hey, G, would you make me a sandwich? But, you know, sometimes... <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah. Okay. Normally, in the real military, everyone does have uh, a health kit, uh, a, a first aid kit, um, called an IFAC. But the rule is, if you're wounded... You use your their IFAC. If they are wounded, use their IFAC. If you are wounded, use your own IFAC, right? That way, you're not going to be running around with no help, you know, first aid kit to heal yourself. So a good rule for a heavy might be don't give anyone your sandwich. It's nice to be there for someone in need. Where are you? Right, right. Oh, oh here you go. I eat your sandwiches. I eat them all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Scout grab it. Heavy feeling bad. Let me tell you something. I drink your milkshake. Something. If Heavy could build his own teleporters, he'd be 200% better. What? Heavy plus teleporters equals a superior class. Heavy just, Heavy just depends on so many of these support classes. Heavy is slow and he needs teleporters. So all you heavies out there, be sure to thank your engineer for building these. Let them know it isn't going unappreciated. Wait, what the fuck? Holy shit. Just make sure that you let Heavy use the teleporter, especially when there are only 16 seconds left in the round. Oh. Oh, you took the teleporter. I mean, I guess it was our demo. Oh, it's a level one. The control point is being contested. <sighs> Heavy's got some problems, all right? All his strengths and weaknesses come together to form one glaring issue. If you're winning, it's great. If you're losing, ugh. Let me see if I can illustrate this. Can you guess which Heavy wins this fight? How about this one? And this one? Think it over. It's me! I win! I always win! All of these clips have one- I love the fact that now gaming YouTubers are using old school Nintendo 64 tracks. I think that's great. That was some Donkey Kong action right there. For those of you that don't know. Donkey Kong 64, the OG. Major thing in common. The enemy heavy is on their side of the map, painfully trying to make their way towards the captured objective. This is commonly referred to as losing. You can argue things like, well, Heavy is a defense class, so he shouldn't even have legs to begin with. <laughs> well, been there, bro. But the point is that there's no question which one of us is going to win in these Heavy duels. There's one last thing that really needs saying. Casual Heavy is a completely different experience than competitive Heavy. In organized Highlander matches, you are guaranteed to be up against one competent spy and one competent sniper. In ca Scene missing. casual games, the enemy team might not even have a sniper. Or at least, not a competent one. Hey, that's me! While gathering clips for this video, I went 35-1 and one in a casual game. This is not a sign of how powerful Heavy is, it's a sign of how hard he punishes casual players. I know that most of my viewers just play TF2 casually, and that's fine. But I think it's more interesting to talk about the classes in a competitive setting, with experienced players that know how to counter you. Because, in that setting, you're gonna learn the limitations of your class real quick. In a competitive match, the enemy team won't hesitate to exploit any weaknesses your class has. That means it's on you to push Heavy's potential to the limit and be there for your team. You have to learn what the best players are going to do to make your life a living nightmare, and you have to learn how to do the same thing to them. Yeah, wow, I'm so far removed from being uh, engaging in competitive play. Um, that said, that's how real military tactical adaptation works. Um, 
Yeah, when I was, I mean, by the time I was deployed, right, the U.S. military had been at war for like a decade, and there was this arms race between people making the IEDs and the military countering them. So it started off with the IEDs just having command wire, or actually it started off with cell phones were the detonators. Then the U.S. military learned how to jam cell phones, so they went to command wires. Then it became really easy for the military to detect command wires, so they went to what are called pressure plates, but then they figured out the military would have these trucks that would trigger the pressure plates early and prematurely, and so then they went over to uh, infrared uh, sensors, but then the military used these like heat, like heated uh, booms in front of the trucks that would set off infrared sensors. So it just became this endless, endless uh, back and forth cycle of people trying to counter each other's technology. And this is sort of how the classes go, right? It's probably an endless cycle of classes countering each other, which is, of course, the sign of a well-balanced game or the sign of a war that's going to go on for 20 more years. Okay. In other words, you have to learn how it feels to play heavy. Hello, and thank you for watching. This video would not have been possible without my amazing patrons on- Woo, buddy. Woo, buddy. Guys, that was another great one, man. Lazy Purple, actually, I actually feel like I learned stuff um, when I watch these Lazy Purple How It Feels to Play videos. And he does a really good job of capturing what it feels, well, not just what it feels like, but like what I need to learn, what skills I have to develop as I get more proficient. You know, right now I'm looking at understanding just the mechanics of the character classes. But as I get better and better, it's going to be more and more about the metagame. So it'll be less and less about being able to time it so that I can air blast with Pyro. And it'll start to become more about what positions do I want to be in? How do I want to support my team as a Pyro, a soldier, a heavy, a scout, a spy? So Anyway, it really helps that I can see this from Lazy Purple. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to, of course, check out the Discord, check out the merch store, and check out the uh, second channel. And thanks so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.